As many of you know, um, our pastor's wife, Sister Stephanie, I don't know where she is. She's hiding. I heard that. If I could get you to make your way up here, I would appreciate it. Please. She had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you find Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. And the best one that you've ever had. Yay! <laughs> I don't know about anybody else, but I would say she's probably the best pastor's wife ever, ever. Amen. Proverbs 31 and 25 says, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. And 1 Corinthians 16 and 18 says, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, acknowledge them that are such. And what that means is that we should honor our pastor's wife, Sister Stephanie. We give you honor and we thank you for who you are and what God has made you. And she, our devotion on our ladies' meeting was about purpose. And she said, well, I've heard her say this before, she never, I never dreamed that I would be a pastor's wife. Never thought I would be a pastor's wife. And look at her today, and she is one of the best. Amen. She serves the Lord with great devotion, and she takes care of the people. If you've ever talked to her, you know her heart. And it's a loving and very caring and gentle heart. And we thank you for that. And so, we honor you today. This is from everybody in the church. Uh, I thank you for giving, and I know she thanks you too, but I'm going to, do you want to say anything? Well, I decided not to wear anything too loud today, so um, it's quite bold, isn't it? I think it speaks for itself, <laughs> but um, I thank you. <laughs> yes, my husband got this for me for my birthday. This is my birthday outfit, um, not birthday suit, um, birthday outfit, and um, yes, uh, yes. But I thank you so much for your giving and um, your loving me the way that I am. Um, I'm not a previous pastor's wife. I am not so-and-so. I am me. And that's my purpose, I guess. Um, I thank you all for loving me so much and just giving of your heart and supporting us with your love and for my better half he's helps keep me grounded <laughs> he smooths out my round, uh, my sharp edges but um, anyway I just thank you all for your giving and I and I love you all and I appreciate you all and um, I just this church wouldn't be this church without you and uh, just continue to pray for us as we lead us, lead the, the church, and uh, just pray that we would always be faithful. <laughs> and uh, I thank you all for your gift. If you'll all stand. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this, but I think it's very appropriate. I would like everybody to just extend their hand to our pastor's wife and let's pray for her this morning um, that the Lord would just touch. Father God, we just thank you, dear Lord. We thank you for this heart.
We thank you for the spirit that you have placed in her, dear Lord. A spirit to serve, dear Lord. A spirit to love your people, dear Lord, and we just pray, Father God, that you would just continue to place your anointing and your power, dear Lord, in our pastor's wife and Stephanie, dear Lord, that you would just use her, Father God, for your glory, for your purpose in all days, in all the days of her life, dear Lord, that you would just encourage her, that you would lift her up, Father God, and that you would just continue to use her, Father God, for your glory. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, and we thank you, Father God. We just thank you so much. Amen. Congratulations, Sister Stephanie. May God continue to bless and keep you. Same for Pastor. Good morning, everyone. And uh, Pastor, this is just a side note, but on that chili bake off, I uh, <clears throat> happen to be the defending champion. Um, <laughs> So we would like, I'd like some competition this year, so we'll just see how that goes. <laughs> amen, amen. Let's enter into a prayer, though, church, before we start our service. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for who you are. And here we are to worship you, to honor you, and to lift you up. We ask that you bless every song, prayer, and testimony. And bless the speaker as the message is brought forth. It may it sink into our hearts that we leave here different than we came. These favors we ask in your blessed name and glory. Amen. Let's sing this old hymn, Higher Ground. I'm pressing on. Lord, 
lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table and a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning, church. Amen, amen. You know, life sometimes, well, it's not sometimes, seems like a lot of times life will hit us from all sides. But aren't you glad you can look back, though, church, and say through it all that we learn to trust in Jesus. Amen. Let's worship as we sing this song. Through it all. Listen at this verse, church. Yes. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong.
you Jesus for that amazing grace thank you Lord thank you Lord how amazing is that how amazing such a beautiful song how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me we were a nobody we were nothing we were just this this nobody down in this pit and he came along and he saved us he saved us glory we take that for granted so many times and we forget. I was talking to this lady at work and we were talking about that cross and he, she thought to herself, she goes, I think about that. And until we read the Scripture, until we talk about that, we sometimes forget about the beating that He took. The Scripture says, beaten to where they could not recognize Him. He took a beating for you, for me. If that's not love, we look at our kids and we look at our children and we say, that is such a love. And they say, a love for your child is so powerful. But it doesn't hold nothing compared to the love that He has for us. We look around and there's times... That was just said. We look around and we say, God, where are you? Because it just seems like nothing is going right. And he whispers in your ear and he says, I'm carrying you. I'm carrying you. Oh, how many times that he has carried me. How many times can we look back and we say, God, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. And God comes along and He whispers. And He says, because I'm going to carry you through. Because I'm going to carry you through. One more time, just, just worship Him. Oh, He is so good. My dreams are gone, I've been set free, I got my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy They're raising your hand. You're saying, brother, i got a need that God needs to take care of. I surrender this to you, God. I give this to you because I cannot handle it. I cannot take it. 
But I give it to you because I know that you are a faithful God. I know that you're going to take care of my needs. You're going to take care of my situation. I don't care what doctor says. I don't care what the world says. I only care what my God says. And my God says, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. Dear Heavenly Father, there is nothing above you. There's nothing beyond you, God. There's not a situation that we have here this morning. There's not a situation, that God, that you cannot take care of that you cannot handle, that you cannot overcome. And God, we are coming together believing with an unlimited resting faith, believing that miracles are going to happen, that God, you're going to move in a mighty way. And right now, we are giving you thanks for that already because we believe it's going to happen. We believe it's happening right now. We believe that you're moving behind the scenes. Right now, you are touching those that are physically needing a touch right now, God. Right now that you're making a way for those that need a financial need right now. They need a, they need a miracle. And we're believing right now that miracle is being taken care of. Mentally, physically, spiritually, God, right now we believe that you're going to move and you are already moving. And we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise for that victory in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing the chorus of this song, I would invite the other members of our choir to be working their way up to join us. has a special to bring forth. for us. We haven't practiced this for two weeks, so hopefully we all remember our parts. This one's a little tricky, but I've got faith in it. How many, you know we remember birthdays, we remember anniversaries, we remember all kinds of special days. You know, one day that, one day that holds a special place or should in all of our hearts is the day that we got saved. Amen. This song says, I remember the day.
Aren't you thankful for that day when the Lord reached down and saved you? It may have been a Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, it may have been a Friday, Thursday, whatever day it was. How many remembers that day and are thankful for that moment when God reached down into your soul and He spoke life into our dead, dry souls? Amen? If you have your Bibles this morning, I'd like you to turn to Haggai chapter 1. We're going to read verse number 5. Haggai chapter 1, verse number 5. I'll give you a minute because it's a hard one to find sometimes. It's not one we go to a lot. you got to cheat, cheat in the front. If not, just wait and it'll be on the screen. Well, it's already up there. Yep. Haggai chapter 1, verse 5. If everybody's found that, say amen. amen. Say oh me. Oh, me. Okay, I'll wait. Some people like to mark scripture, so I'll wait because this is a good one to mark. Haggai chapter 1, verse 5. It says, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. This morning I want to preach on the thought of consider your ways. Consider your ways. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning, God, for your presence, God, that we've already felt here in this place. We thank you, God, today because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God, you have never changed. And Father, I pray this morning, God, that you would help me, God, to speak what you want spoken here today and not what I want to say. God, help me to be your microphone that I could declare your word to your people this morning. And God, help us all, even me, God, to consider our ways this morning. God, we know, God, not always your ways are not always our ways. But God, help us to be obedient, God, when you speak unto our hearts. And Father, I pray most of all, God, that you would anoint me and help me to say everything that I say under the anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray it all in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. I looked up what the word consider means in the dictionary, and it means to think carefully, especially in order to make a decision or to pay attention, or to view attentively. So this morning I want to preach on the thought, or maybe ask you a question. Have you considered your ways lately? The Word of God asks there in Haggai, Therefore, as thus saith the Lord of hope, consider your ways. Now I'm here this morning wrestling I wanted to wait till the end, but I want to obey the Lord this morning. Because I have been considering my ways as your pastor. I feel like we're in a place, if we're not careful, we can die. Life is not stealing people from another church. But life comes when... Converts come to the altar and give their hearts to the Lord. and new, new souls are saved and birthed at the altar. And if we are not careful, we can die. If children aren't born, where are we? But Wednesday night when Roy was preaching, he spoke something. And God began to bring it back to my remembrance and I was going to wait till the end and I just feel like I need to share now before I go on and we'll just let the Lord just have His way. But He said something Wednesday night and God reminded me. But He said something when He was praying, I believe, when He was praying, He said that when people drive by this church that they would feel a draw to come in. And God reminded me there have been people that have stopped here and said that I was driving by and I felt something pull me to pull in the parking lot and to come into this church. 
It wasn't always doing a service. It was times when I was here praying by myself. or It was just times they just said they felt a draw just to come into the parking lot. And I felt like God spoke to me and He said, I placed you here in this place. God has placed this church in a wonderful place. I mean, how many thousands of cars go by every day? There are people that pull in this parking lot throughout the day and they bring their children to go out and play on the play sets and to play basketball under our basketball goals. People sit out under the pavilion and they eat their lunch. People next door from the church will come over and have lunch or people will stop and they'll have lunch back under the pavilion. And I feel like God said, I have placed you here for this time and this purpose. But I feel like He has laid something in my heart today that I want to share with you. And I want to ask for your help. For the next 14 days, I would like to ask that you would come at your convenience and pray. And this is what I feel like the Lord laid in my heart to do, is to pray over our property. If you can walk, walk the property. But if you can't walk, come and sit under the pavilion or come and sit in your car and pray for this church. Pray that when people drive by, they feel a draw. That they feel something. Pull them. But not only pull them to the parking lot, to the play set or the basketball court, but as they enter the doors of this building, that God would pull them and draw them to the altar and give their hearts to the Lord if they don't know the Lord and they don't have a church. I don't believe we should try to take people from next door and down the road. But I believe that God will honor our prayers. But for the next 14 days, I want to ask, you would take some time throughout your day. If it's one day, if it's two days, if it's every day, if you have some time that you would come to this church, that you would pray that God would begin to draw people into this parking lot. I believe God's going to do if we'll make an effort. And I would like you also to pray for everyone that is sick in this church. I won't be able to open the doors of the church and keep them open all day. I don't believe it has to be done in here. I believe that this property, God has placed us in this property for such a time as this. And if we will honor God by making an effort, I know you can pray at home. I believe you can and you should. But I want to ask you to make an effort, a sacrifice, to come sit on this property somewhere if you want to sit under the shade tree back there, under the shade tree at the picnic table and pray, you do however God lays it in your heart to do. But I just ask you that if you'll make an effort, I believe God's going to honor that. Amen. Amen. But I have considered my way. Am I doing my job? Am I, are we doing our job? I believe that God has put people here for such a time as this. Amen. And we'll make an extra effort of praying for our church, our church people that are sick. And please pray for me that I follow the leading and the obedience of the Spirit of God. This is not my church. This is His church. And I want to honor and glorify and magnify Him. And the Word of God says if we would lift Him up, He would draw all men unto Him. Amen. So when you pray, forget about yourself. Forget about what you're going through and pray that God would save people. Draw people into this church. But when they come, we've got to be willing to pray. You've got to be willing to come up beside I don't know about you, but it means a lot when you're down there praying and to feel somebody, to know somebody's praying with you. But this wasn't my message today, but I just wanted to share what I felt like the Lord has laid on my heart 
this morning. If you'll do that, I believe God will do His. So the next 14 days, if you'll take time, if you want to do it every day, do it every day. If you want to pick one day, whatever. If you want to do it early in the morning, late at night, whatever. Just don't let the police call me at 11 (laughs) o'clock. Yeah. Not 11 in the morning. I'm up before 11, okay? Anyway. All right, let's go on. Consider your ways to think carefully in order to make a decision. I thought carefully about before I even said anything this morning, and I couldn't, say, I couldn't be quiet any longer. I just wanted to be obedient. It says, pay attention to view attentively. I believe now is a very important time in our lives as Christians that we all should daily consider our ways. Am I doing the right things in my life? Am I living my life the best that I can for the Lord. Now's not the time to be wishy-washy in our faith and lazy in our relationship with the Lord, but we must consider each and every day, am I making the right decisions? Am I making the right choices for me or for my family? Am I paying attention to what I'm doing? Because whether you realize it or not, there are people watching your life. So we must consider every decision and everything that we do in our lives also bring consequences not only to ourselves, but a lot of times to people around us. When we neglect the things of God within ourselves, it also brings neglection upon those around us. Because if we're not doing what God has called us to do, those around us may suffer. So we must daily consider our ways. Maybe you can... I wrote down just a few questions to ask yourself. And I ask myself this also. Do I acknowledge God in all my ways? Every day do I acknowledge God? Do I seek first the kingdom of God when I have a need? Do I give thanks in all things? Even though things may not always go the way I think they should go. Do I trust the Lord with all my heart? Do I present my body to Him a living sacrifice? Do I prove the Lord by bringing my tithe into the storehouse? I believe we all should take time to take a look at our own lives. I'm not here to judge nobody. That's not my job. He's the judge. I'm here to offer you and just to mention things to you. And it's up to you to choose what you do with what I say this morning. But I believe we should all, if we desire and want to make heaven our home, I believe we should all every day of our lives consider my ways, consider our ways. When I point, there's three pointing back at me. So don't think I came to point you out or to single anybody out. This is for me just as much as it is for anybody else. But sad to say, and I may have to hide when I say it, a lot of times we like to consider everybody else's way instead of our own. We can find faults with this church. We can find faults with that church. We can find faults with that, the church down. And you're going to find faults here. And you're going to find faults here. And you're going to find faults in yourself. Anyway. (laughs) Matthew chapter 7, verse number 3. It says, Why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? So many times we're so concerned about somebody else's little mistake or somebody else's little mode or somebody else's little fault that we forget about my beam that I got to deal with. Satan used this for years. He'll get Christians so concerned about everybody else and everything bad that's going on and looking at everybody else's moat because we all got a moat, don't we? Look, I got one. I could probably got a beam. I'm flesh. We're all flesh. 
But we're so considered about everybody else's moat that we forget about the beam or the thing that we have going on in our lives. That we neglect because we're so focused on somebody else. Let's go on. How many knows we can't compare our ways to one another? Your walk with God and my walk with God is two different walks. Don't try to walk like I walk, and don't try to walk like sister so-and-so walks. You walk like God's called you to walk. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you, you all know this. I beseech you, therefore, you ought to have been in Sunday school, you ought to be able to quote it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now stop there, comma, it says, holy we don't like to talk about holy no more. How many still re- goes? God still requires His people to live holy lives. Not holy according to man's standards, but holy unto Him. Amen? God sees all and God knows all. But it says, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God's not asking you for anything unreasonable. But we live in a day and hour where everybody wants to compare. Well, you've got to watch Nate now. Because I'm a lot better than Nate. <laughs> or they may say, well, I come to church more than they do. I don't struggle anymore like they do. You may come to church more, but do you read your Bible more? Oh, they don't give in the offering no more. They haven't given for months. But maybe they're paying online. We try to compare. Am I doing better than they are? Then I might be okay. He said, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Not comparing to one another and saying, well, I'm better than he is or I'm better than she is. I must be okay. How many knows before God we're an open book? God sees all and knows all. You may come to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, but you may never open your Bible when you leave this church. You're not living holy and acceptable unto the Lord. I ask you the question today. Consider your ways. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24. Have you considered lately why you serve the Lord? Why do you serve the Lord? Amen? We sang the song, I remember the day when the Lord saved me. When was the last time you stopped and remembered the day the Lord brought you out? David said, I was in a horrible pit. We try to justify, paint pictures of how sin isn't really sin anymore. It's all okay in God's eyes and all this. But how many knows that's not true? Sin is sin, and sin separates us from God. And sin is a horrible place. Amen. But thank God He was willing to reach down into that horrible pit and pull us out. Amen. How many remembers the day when the Lord saved you? I got ahead of myself, but I want to go back. See, we're good to cast judgment on the world, but what about the church? First Peter 4, verse 17. For the time has come. The judgment must begin at the house of God. It has first begun at us. What shall the end of them that obey not the gospel Amen. We're so good at talking about how dirty and sinful the world is. And I've done it myself. I mean, I preach and teach and talk about how dirty and sinful the world is because it is. Isn't it? But we're good at that, right? We're good at talking about how if you reject Christ and you're going to spend eternity in hell, we're good about that. But what about the people sitting in the house of God week after week, Sunday after Sunday, that sing the songs but don't have a relationship with God? 
We must begin judgment here before we can do anything out there. Amen. Don't come and pray in this parking lot. Amen. If you ain't right with God. I may say hard to mean, but that's... How can we be an example to somebody else if we ain't got it right? God don't expect us to walk on water and be some holy thing that floats around. Amen. But He wants us to consider our ways. Am I living my life the best I can to be an example for somebody else? Because there are people right now looking for what you have. But if we don't show them the truth of the gospel, we're going to show them a lie. And we're going to get sued for false advertisement. Amen. How can we win souls if we don't consider our own ways? How can we lead somebody to the cross if we haven't been to the cross lately? How can we tell somebody to pray to God and we don't pray to God? Amen? We have to allow God to judge us. I'm not here to judge you. God is the judge. As the church of a whole, look at us. We're not doing such a great job. But we've got it figured out how to tell them how they're going to hell. Let's go on. But have you considered lately why you serve the Lord? 1 Samuel chapter 12, 24, Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth. And with all your heart, for consider how great things that He has done for you. Amen. Are you thankful for all that God has done in your life? Amen. Why are you here this morning? Why do you serve God? Do you understand it is a better life serving Jesus Christ? Do you understand the decision that you made when you accepted Him into your life? That you made the right decision? Or do you question, oh man, I I made a bad decision. Fear the Lord. Serve Him in truth. God, we can't fake it. Some people say fake it till you make it. How many knows you can't fake it to God? You may fake it to us. Consider your ways. Consider our ways. I'm talking to me too. Amen? Why do you serve God? Why do we come to church? Why do we worship God? I hope because you love Him, because you desire a relationship with Him. Why? Because you remember the day when He saved you, when He brought you out of darkness into the light, and you are thankful for what He's done in your life. That's why we serve Him, right? Let us never forget where we came from. The Bible says we've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. We were sinners just like the prostitute. We were sinners just like the drunk and the addict. We may not have drunk and we may not have slept around, but we all were sinners. Don't forget where you came from. Amen? Don't think you're so up there. That you can't come along somebody down here that's struggling. Because guess what? You might be down there struggling in a week or so. Why do you serve God? Why do you do what you do? If we're not careful, we can just go through the motions. How many of us, we can know how to do church and not have church? We can read the Bible and not get nothing out of it. Because we get our check mark for the day and say, Oh, I read my Bible. Look at me, God. But what did you get out of it when you read it? Why do you pray? Do you pray for selfish gain or because you love God? Do you pray when everything's going good or you just pray when things are falling apart? How many knows when you really love God, you'll pray whether things are going good or whether things are not going good? And when, when things go bad, we won't blame God. But a lot of people, amen, when things go bad, they start questioning and blaming God. These are the times we need to draw nigh to God. God said if we'll draw nigh to Him, He'll draw nigh to us. Amen? Why do you pray? Why do you spend time in the Word? Just so you can get a check mark and so God can look down and say, Oh, I like you. Pat you on the head. Good boy, Johnny. Good job, Susie. You did good today. How many of us, we shouldn't do it for that? We should do it because we desire a relationship with Him. 
Have you considered, am I fulfilling the purpose that God has for my life? And I'm hurrying, we're almost... Oh, I'm not going to worry about it. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Amen. Are you fulfilling the purpose that God has placed you for today? Are you fulfilling God's purpose in your life? The Bible says we're chosen. No man comes to God unless the Spirit of God draws, draws him to God. He chose us. Amen? He chose to send His Son to the cross. His Son chose to go through what He went through. He could have called, amen, a legion of angels to come rescue Him from the cross. He didn't even have to go to the cross. He willingly went to the cross. Amen. He chose to do what He did for you and I. So you are a chosen generation. If you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are chosen by God. And if you haven't accepted Christ, He still chooses you. He still loves you. And He wants you to choose Him. And He wants to save you today. But am I fulfilling the purpose that God has placed in my life? Consider your ways. Consider, am I fulfilling that purpose that God's placed in my heart, in my life? You may not have a singing purpose. You may not have a preaching purpose. But you have a purpose to have a relationship with God that you can go out there into the world where you work, where you shop, and you can show the love of God out of your life. And you may not have to speak a word. Just live the gospel. Have you considered, am I fulfilling the purpose God has for my life? Are you living a lip service gospel? Or are you living a relationship gospel? As we consider our ways. Why do we do what we do? Why am I doing what I do? Do I do it because of repetition and because I've always done it? Matthew chapter 15 verse 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. They honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Some of you are already thinking about, well, he shut up so I can go eat. I'll hurry up, because I know you're hungry. My stomach's hungry too. <laughs> but why do you do what you do? Is it because you love God, because you have a heart relationship with God, or you do it because it's a routine that you've done for years? It's Sunday morning, I get up, get dressed, come to church, we sing a couple songs, lift my hands, praise God, go home, eat lunch, come back, do it again Sunday night. Hey man, I get up Monday morning, read my Bible and pray. Hey man, but I don't really have a relationship. I have a routine. When you spend time praying in the Word, do you stay and listen and let God speak to you as you speak to Him? We can have the routine down, but do we have the relationship down? As we consider our way, I tell you, I'm talking to me just like I'm talking to you. I'm, sometimes I get in a hurry, I pray and tell God everything I need, but do I, I, do I wait long enough and listen and allow Him to speak to me? Amen. We can draw nigh to God with our lips, saying, God, I love you and I praise you and all that, but our heart can be somewhere else. When our heart's really in love with this world. We say we love God, but we worship the things in the... Oh, anyway, let's go on. <sighs> I told you I'm preaching myself. I've got to be careful. I don't want to step on my own toe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, I'm real. I can get caught up. We can get, get busy doing life and forget God. Amen? Be careful. We just don't draw an eye with our lips. Make sure our hearts are with our lips, all right? Does my heart truly belong to God? Does my heart truly belong to God? Amen. Have you considered your ways? Are you ready to meet God? I know I used this scripture last week, but I'll use it again. Hebrews 9.27, it's pointed unto man wants to die, and after that, this, the judgment. That's the judgment. It's going to be too late. 
I mean, when we stand before God, we have to have considered our ways now before we get there. How many knows we ain't going to scramble before God and say, Oh God, I messed up here and I messed up there. Please forgive me. How many knows we have to take care of business here now, today? The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Because when you stand before God, He's going to look at your life. And if He doesn't see the blood of His Son applied to your life, He's going to say, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I do not know you. And there are going to be people there that day that say, I went to church every Sunday. I gave in the offering every week. I cleaned the church. I did this. I did that. And God's going to say, I don't know you. Because we thought it was a performance base. How many knows it's a relationship base? Huh? We can get the performance down. But if our heart's not in our performance, how many knows we're wasting our time? Amen. As we stand to our feet in closing today, as they return to the music. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 19. It says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. How many knows God gives us a choice? God won't make you serve Him. God's not here today, and I'm not here today to beat you on the head and say, hey, you better get things in order. I'm not here today telling you to consider your ways, or I'm going to thump you. But I am here today to tell you if you've not considered your ways, there's coming a day when you're going to have to stand before the Creator of this universe and you're going to have to give an account for your life. And if you haven't chose to serve God, you're going to spend eternity in eternal hell. And there is no coming out. There is no in-between. Either heaven or hell. And the only way we're going to get to go to heaven and hear the Lord say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, is if we have made a choice and a decision to choose life. Deuteronomy said here, I set before you a choice. And today God sets before each and every one of us today a choice. Am I going to serve God with half a heart? Am I going to serve God with just a lip service? Or am I going to serve God with everything that's within me? Jesus didn't go halfway to the cross and give up. But He went all the way to the cross. He laid down His life. He gave it all for you. But are you willing to give it all to Him? Romans tells us, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. God wants your life. But it's up to you to choose life or death. As we bow our heads and close our eyes this morning, I ask you the question again. Consider your ways. Am I doing the best I can? Am I living for God the best that I can be? Am I in a rut? Am I in a routine? Or am I in a relationship this morning? If you're here today, you're in a rut, you're in a routine, come the altars are open and pray and say, God, help me to have a relationship. Because God desires to have a relationship with each and every one of you here today. And God, God desires... For you to spend time with Him, not be out of obligation, but out of love and relationship. So if you're here today, you got some stuff you need to work on. Come, the altars are open. Don't you worry about what anybody says. Because we're not in a competition today. We're in this together. If you're struggling today, I'm here to pray with you and help you through your struggle. Because we've all had struggles. We all had moats and beams that come into our lives. But so many times we allow them to remain because we're afraid of what somebody else might say or what somebody else might think. 
If you got stuff you need to work on, come, pray, get it right. Because we all have an appointment with God and we don't know when that appointment might come. It may come before we leave this service today. It may come before you get to lunch. Have you choose life? Have you choose to have a right relationship with God? As they begin to sing, sing and play, the altars are open. If you need to pray, come. If you don't want to come to the altar right where you're at, tell God, I choose life. God, I choose you. You chose me. Now I declare that I choose you. I choose God. Let him know right where you're at. I choose you, Lord. Amen. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be. It's always been.
souls to the kingdom of God. And I have a burden today. I want to see souls saved, brought out of darkness into the light. So I hope today as we consider our ways that you'll consider time in the next 14 days that you'll come spend on this property somewhere praying for this church, praying for me and praying for those that are sick and praying that God would just draw people into this place. But most of all, draw them into the kingdom of God. Amen. I hope today the word of God has challenged your heart. Let us never remember, forget that he must be the center. Amen. It's not a self gospel. It's a God gospel. Amen. Let's pray to be dismissed. Amen. Cody, will you dismiss us today? Of the world burn like a fire in me.